Welcome to my channel, Purposeful Play, where I talk about all things early childhood education. I'm Danielle and I am a former 4K teacher, now turn trainer, teacher trainer, and person who records YouTube videos to share with you. That was a long explanation of what um, I am or what I do. But anyways, today I wanna to share with you some ideas, some art ideas for the fall. Now maybe you're doing a tree study, um, but I have several that I wanna share with you. It's a great time of year um, to be doing a study on trees because there's so much to observe and, and experience and investigate it at this time of year. Um, well, in Wisconsin it is. So that's what I'm sharing today. Let's get started. You know, when I was in my classroom, I had that space and all the materials to like physically show you how to do these things in real time. Um, but I don't have that anymore. And all of my stuff is in boxes and bins in the basement. So I was like, hmm, how can I figure out how to do this um, without making an absolute mess of things downstairs. So I'm gonna do my best to share some of my ideas with you. Um, and if I can't actually show you, then I'm gonna just put some pictures that I can find. So the first thing you need to be doing is collecting those materials. And where are you finding the materials for these ideas? Outside. Have your students, we go on a, like a, a tree hunt or a tree walk or a nature walk um, everybody gets a little paper bag and we go and collect up stuff. So we walk around our school property and sort of makes, a, oh my gosh, a fly just flew like right into the camera. And I saw it on my screen. That was actually kind of funny. He's going to be part of this meeting. Usually it's my dog, but today it's going to be a fly. Okay, so you're going to take your paper bags and go for a walk and collect things up. And of course, as you're out on your walk, you're talking, you're observing, you're taking notes of some of the questions that the children are posing. Um, so you can answer those questions later. Um, and I really, I honestly just let the kids pick up whatever they want. So we usually end up with a bag full of handfuls of dried leaves. Um, but you know, sometimes we come to a maple tree that has the, the seeds that, you know, that are kind of like helicopters when you throw them in the air. I try to demonstrate that for the students and then they can, you know, are really excited and interested in those. We look at the bark. Um, if there are pieces of bark that are on the ground, you can use those. Um, any kind of fruit, little cherries or berries that you find. Um, I also like to grab large branches as well. Those ones are usually come from me um, and I find them because I like, you know, like, actual limbs from the tree. Um, but that's step one, collect all, all your materials. All right, I got my notes here. Um, one of my most favorite um, art ideas is a shadow box. And what I've done in the past is I've had shoe boxes, the children bought in shoe boxes. Um, you could do it on anything really, but I love the look of a shoe box and then I had a parent volunteer paint the insides of them black. You could also have the students do that, let them dry well in advance. Um, and then they take the materials that they have and create a collage um, on the black background of your um, of the shoebox lid. You could also do it in the actual shoebox, um, but you know, they're kind of just exploring the materials they have. They can be um, creating any kind of design or art piece that they want. And of course, as they're doing this, um, you're talking about what they found and what do they notice about those things. Um, if I can find a picture, I'll put it here because they are gorgeous. And then we actually hung those up um, out in the hallway um, for a uh, nice um, down low for other people to look at when they were walking by our classroom. Um, and I also wrote down quotes and um, from the students as they were collecting materials and um, creating their shadow boxes so that, that al went along with their um, their pieces of art. So that's one of my favorites. I usually don't um, encourage children to pick the leaves off of the trees, 
but um, I had to do this because we haven't had any leaves fall yet. Um, but I like them to pick them up off the ground, especially um, because they've changed color by the time they, they fall on the ground. Um, and one of the first things we do when we bring our leaves inside is I have big um, pieces of construction paper. Um, I have a red one, an orange one, a yellow one, a green one, and a brown one. And students can take leaves out of their, um, out of their bags and then just sort them onto these papers. And then um, one year I had students that wanted to permanently attach them. So we got out glue and glued them on. And then we hung those ones up um, on the wall too. It just, it made a beautiful art, even though we were, I shouldn't say just sorting them. Um, but that was kind of a nice um, art piece that hung on our walls. So much you can do with this little leaf. Um, you can paint over this, paint on the leaf and then take a print from it. So you paint it, you put a piece of paper on top and then you pull it off and you have a print. So that's one thing you can do um, with a leaf and you'll hopefully be able to see some of those veins that are in the leaves. You can see the shapes that are on the leaves and you can kind of compare those different shapes of leaves that come from different trees. Um, you can put this on a paper and then, um, not this one because it's not very flat, but if you can find a flat one, you put it on a piece of paper um, and then you use a, a sponge and go boop, 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 like all the way around it. And then when you lift it off, you have that um, silhouette of a, a leaf. If you wanna be looking at the shapes of the leaves and also the veins, you can do that, um, you know, that traditional grabbing some crayons, putting a piece of paper over top and doing some rubbings on them. So you can, the kids can see really what the, the shapes and the veins on there. You can also do that actually with the bark. Um, you can even take crayons and markers outside and um, talk about the texture that they see um, on the bark and um, be taking rubbings even while you're outside. At the easer, e easer, at the easel, you can take a large um, leaf outline. So it's just the, the black line outline. Um, you can have students like cut them out if you want, or you can just cut them out yourself, but I really like to have um, it really, really big. And then just having the, the, the colors, um, red and yellow on there. You can also have maybe green um, and just see what they do with them. They might discover that they can paint um, green, um, red and yellow to make orange. Um, maybe if they mix a bunch of the colors together, they could make brown, who knows. Um, but those make beautiful, um, art pieces. And then also for, for, for me, what I've done is we've hung those leaves, those big leaves in our classroom tree that we've made grow up our, our wall and up across the ceiling. Um, and so we have our fall leaves that are hanging and attached to the branches in the tree. And then one thing I like to do with those really big branches is just put them out on the art table with um, paint. I tend to use acrylic paint for that one because I feel like the tempera paint doesn't stick as well. Um, so, you know, smock up so they don't get the, the acrylic paints on themselves, but, um, and then the students just paint it. And, you know, as you're painting, I do like to sort of observe and talk about the branches and, you know, why do you think it fell from the tree and what do you notice? What do you see? Um, and then we, I, in the past, I've hung it with fishing line from the, the ceiling. And so they're just, um, like above the art area. Um, and I really like that one. I liked it too, because it stayed out for several days and it just, kids just kept adding to it and adding to it. I had one year too, that they wrapped yarn around it. Um, and that looked really cool. Having real life materials in the classroom for our students to do, um, a still life drawing. So, you know, whether you have leaves, um, or you can buy like one of those little tiny plants. It almost looks like a little tiny um, spruce tree. It might even be a spruce tree. I'm not sure. We've had one um, before, but having that out and having children observe um, and do some uh, live, what do they call it? Still life sketching. Um, what about pine cones? Taking the pine cones. I know this isn't really um, an art, a process art, but taking the pine cones and, you know, as we're talking about um, who lives in trees, 
um, and the parts of the tree and what comes from trees using those pine cones to um, make bird feeders because we know that those birds might not be able to find food once it gets really cold in the winters snow has arrived if you live in a place that has snow um, but you know taking that um, pine cone and adding peanut butter to it and rolling it in some seeds if you have students that are allergic to peanut butter you can also use um, like lard and just having the seeds all stick to that as well um, what's that called Crisco like that Crisco um, vegetable oil I guess solidified vegetable oil um, and then having those um, hanging um, in the trees. I've also done um, sun catchers. So um, using the materials that the students um, collected on your nature walk, actually everything that we're doing is all the stuff is always from the nature walk. Um, you use contact paper. So you put down a piece of contact paper on the, the table and it's sticky on one side, right? And that's not on the other. So put a piece of contact paper on there and students can stick all of their things on there in a design. And then you can um, take the another piece of contact paper and put it on top and you kind of like squish it all together. You can poke a hole at the, the top um, and then a string and it's a beautiful um, sun catcher. I mean, it doesn't really catch the sun, but it's pretty when you hang it in the window. Have you read the book Leaf Man, which is, um, has wonderful artwork in there with um, collage using leaves and other parts of the trees. So after reading that book, you can put that book at your art table. Um, you can have the materials out and they can kind of create their own leaf man, leaf animal, leaf creature. Ooh, wouldn't it wouldn't be fun too if you um, took photos of that and kind of made a, a leaf man book, your own kind of leaf man book. Um, I kind of just thought it up because I never, I never actually did that. That would be a good idea. I wouldn't put the actual papers in a book that the students did their, um, created their leaf man on because those, those leaves get all crunchy and flipping through that book, they'd all just fall apart. Um, but if you took a photo and then you can kind of be the scribe and write down what the students, um, tell you about their picture, that would be a really great class book. Um, instead of painting with paint brushes, you can paint with um, other materials to create that that leaf, um, that top of the tree. Um, you can use fingers, finger painting and adding those colors, the red and the yellow and the green so that they can do some mixing with that. Um, sometimes I actually draw like the trunk of a tree or I have the students draw that trunk um, and then they can add the, the foliage on there. Um, you can also use um, parts of the tree to be painting. So if you have sticks or if you have um, pine cones, you can do kind of painting with those. Um, you can also use Q-tips. That's a fun one to put at the easel where you, you put, um, have the students draw the trunk of the tree or you can draw it and then they can add um, the foliage onto their tree. So that's it. What other art ideas do you have and that you can share with everyone else? I'd love to hear about them and I know everybody else would too. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it is actually helpful to me because it, um, the more thumbs up, thumbs up it gets, um, the more people will see the video. And so that means that I, we are sharing um, ideas with more people and helping more people out. So if you give it a thumbs up, it is actually very helpful. Thanks for watching and have a happy day.